Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome once again to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. And Lenny, I'm fascinated by the bouncing meatball. Yeah, that was, uh, you never know, right? I mean, as long as it doesn't bounce once you eat it. That's the main thing, I guess. Uh, don't want it doing that kind of thing. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Chattering, welcome to you, Andrea and Beer Man and Clarona, Cyclonus, and George, and Lawrence of Warwick, and Lenny, and to all of you on the Facebook page. Looks like I may have just lost you. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. Technical difficulties abound this morning. Just bear with me just a moment. Let's see here. Because I think I can fix what I just lost, at least I hope so, and we will find out shortly, won't we? I'm not sure if I'm with you or not. I hope that I am. I hope I haven't left anyone. Let's see here. Looks like we're still on go, so if you have any questions this morning about fantasy football yesterday, we're going to talk a lot of football this morning. Uh, week 10 uh, in the books after tonight's Monday night game. The Vikings and Bears will kick it off tonight around 8 o'clock. Uh, I look for the Bears to win that one. I picked the game Thursday night correct. I told you I thought the Colts would beat the Titans, and they did. Uh, let's talk about these uh, fantasy players. You know, One thing that, in my opinion, fantasy football and fantasy baseball have in common, just from a basic tenant position, is this. I want players on my fantasy team whose teams are win winners, for the most part. Now, I know you can say I get trash points if my, the team is losing. Maybe a quarterback will throw more. And, and maybe the quarterback position is the exception. But typically, uh, I would rather have players on a team who win 30 to 10 than players on a team who lose 30 to 10 because you're going to get better stats. And I'm looking at this AFC. Man, it's crazy. Have you looked at the standings this morning in the AFC? Because I'm going to go through these standings with you. Uh, starting in the um, AFC East, where the Bills are 7-3, and three, the Dolphins are 6-3. and three. They play again. You know, since Tua came up and started at quarterback for the Dolphins, they've won three in a row. Uh, they were three and three, and, a, you know, a good team before Tua took over at quarterback. But since taking over at quarterback, they are now uh, six and three, and the Dolphins look really good. I don't know if you watched the Dolphins yesterday. They played the Chargers. Uh, Justin Herbert, who is just having an incredible breakout rookie season. He didn't start week one, but he has started every game since. But yesterday was a down day for Mr. Herbert. Yesterday was probably the uh, worst day of his, of his career so far. I mean, he's had a short one, no doubt, because of him being a rookie quarterback. But I look at what that Miami defense did to Herbert yesterday, and what they do, they disguise things, they blitz. Herbert only scored, when I say only scored, 24 points yesterday in my league, but he went, he only had 187 passing yards. He had an interception. Now, he did run for a touchdown. He did pass for two. You're going to get that, but what I'm getting at is Miami took a quarterback who's usually scoring 30 points or more over the last several weeks, and he only scored in the lower 20s. Uh, that's the kind of defense they have there. And uh, I guess you'd say an opportunistic defense. That's a long word for a Monday morning, isn't it, guys? Um, the Pats played last night. They played the Ravens in uh, Foxborough. Uh, New England wins. They're now 4-5. and five. Do I count the Patriots out? You better believe I don't. That coach named uh, Belichick over there on the sidelines, he's a good one, you know. And um, four and five, I know that's not a winning record, and, and, and they would be right now the 10th place team in the AFC, but they do play the Bills, they do play the Dolphins 
to an extent they control their destiny still and if they could win against both the Bills and Dolphins that would uh, put them on track I guess the best they could do right now is 11 and 5 I think you got to win 10 games I think I've always said that I think you got to win 10 games to make the playoffs and this year I wonder if it might be 11 uh, let's look at the Central Division, or the North, rather, where Pittsburgh is 9-0. They win again yesterday. Uh, and this is a good example of fantasy players. All week long, uh, Joe Mixon, running back for Cincinnati, out yesterday, still with an injured foot. And Giovanni Bernard is the starting running back when uh, he's the handcuff, when Mixon is out. And in the last two weeks... And they're coming off of a bye, so I guess it was two weeks before the bye. Bernard played really well. Um, it, it, now, his opponents were not the Steelers, but uh, when you look back at his game log, week uh, seven, they played Cleveland, and in a starting role, he scored 18 fantasy points, only 37 yards rushing that week, but 59 yards receiving and a receiving touchdown. And then in week eight, Against Tennessee, he had 21 fantasy points, 16 rushing yards, including a rushing touchdown, three receptions, another uh, receiving touchdown. And so yesterday, he's back in the driver's seat. He's starting against Pittsburgh. But this Pittsburgh defense, there's a reason why Pittsburgh's 9-0. Uh, one reason is they have a really good run defense. And yesterday, uh, he only got Giovanni Bernard 30 yards rushing, he only got 17 yards receiving on four receptions. He only scored six and a half points in my fantasy league. And here's a good reason why a Giovanni Bernard is not a great start when you're playing against a good defense. Volume notwithstanding, and that's what they were saying he would get yesterday was volume. Well, he didn't get volume either. Uh, getting behind, the Bengals had to throw and throw a lot, and it didn't work too well. They, they lose to Pittsburgh 36 to 10, and now Bernard probably, I don't know about mixing situation. Am I saying a player like Bernard should be cut? No. I'm just saying he's not necessarily the best option because of the game flow and the type of teams that he will play. Now, you look at the Bengals' upcoming schedule, and you see they play against the, the Washington football team next week, who have the ninth best rushing defense in the league. Then they play against Miami, just talked about their defense, and then Dallas, and then Pittsburgh again. So not saying he's a cut. I'm just saying he is a relief pitcher in baseball language. How's that? Uh, Baltimore falling to the Patriots last night. They're now 6-3, and three, and Cleveland is 6-3. and three. So there you have so far... Four teams with three losses in the AFC, but there are more. You go to the South, where you've got Indianapolis leading the division, tied with Tennessee. Now, they played Thursday night. Indy beat Tennessee. They're both 6-3. and three. And then out West, you've got the world champion Kansas City Chiefs, 8-1. and one, And the Raiders. Yes, the Las Vegas Raiders, 6-3. and three. Coming off a really big win yesterday at home, and uh, they played Denver. And, and, you know, Denver, there's three and six. Not a bad team, really, but the Raiders evermore put it on the Broncos yesterday, winning 37 to 12. It was one of the worst defeats Denver's taken to the Raiders in quite a while. And how did they do it? They did it running the football. If, I don't know if you watched James Conner yesterday. James Conner scored over almost 30 points in fantasy. He had 21 rushes. He had 112 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. He caught four passes for 24 yards. And there's the key. Derek Carr only threw for around 160 yards yesterday. The Raiders are becoming a very physical football team. They're running the football. They're taking time off the clock. They're wearing down the defense of the teams that they're playing against. And Jacobs is a really big part of that Oakland offense. In fact, I dare to say if Jacobs were to get injured, 
that would have a big, big impact on the Raiders. Now, I know Booker came in in relief and had some really good stats, but remember, they were trash points. Trash points count in fantasy. The Raiders aren't going to win a lot of games 37-12. to 12. I did look at a stat yesterday, though, on the Raiders, and their first 10 games, the winning percentage against the teams they played is like 588. And over the last part of the season, the winning percentage of the teams they will play is like 430. So they are certainly getting into, it looks like on paper at least, an easier part of their schedule. We shall see. But that AFC will be an interesting, interesting fight to the end. Uh, The Dolphins look really good. Talk about the Bills for a minute. Did you guys watch, what a game. Did you guys watch the game yesterday between the Buffalo Bills and the Arizona Cardinals? Because if you didn't, you need to watch it on NFL Network. It's like one of the most exciting games of the year. Uh, Wow. I don't know where to start. I know where I'm going to end, okay? Uh, First of all, Arizona wins 32-30. Buffalo scores a touchdown to go ahead 30-26 with about 34 seconds to go in the game. 30-26 means, of course, that Arizona would have to score a touchdown to win the game. Well, they get the kickoff and they move the ball to around midfield. And with just seconds on the clock, last play of the game, Kyler Murray, remember that name, drops back in shotgun, He gets some pressure. He moves to his left towards the sideline. And at the last moment before being tackled, throws a Hail Mary towards the end zone. DeAndre Hopkins is between three defenders. Now, I'm going back in time. I'm a Raider fan. You already know that. I don't know if any of you guys remember the 1974 playoff game between the Dolphins and the Raiders. It was called the Sea of Hands game. And with Miami leading 26 to 21 late in the game, Kenny Stabler drops back the pass. Big rush by that Miami no-name no defense. As Stabler is falling down, he throws a pass towards Clarence Davis in the end zone, who is surrounded by three or four Miami Dolphin defenders. And the ball, Clarence Davis out duels. The ball's perfectly thrown. Davis catches it. Raiders win. They advance to the next round of the playoffs. And they, in essence, end the Dolphin dynasty. The Dolphins haven't won a Super Bowl since. The Raiders beat them that year in the AFC playoffs. Okay, move ahead. This is not a playoff game, but it was probably the most exciting game I watched this year. As... Kyler Murray is moving left and throwing the ball at the very last second towards the end zone. DeAndre Hopkins is between three Buffalo Bills. And the ball has got some air on it, got some lift on it, and the ball's coming down. And as it comes down, Hopkins catches the pass between the three defenders. And I don't mean they're five yards from him. These guys are within inches, all of them, of DeAndre Hopkins. So I'm not sure this morning... Who made the better of the two plays? Was it Kyler Murray's throw or was it DeAndre Hopkins' catch? I'm going to call it a tie. I'm going to say they were both equally remarkable. Hopkins comes down with the catch in the end zone. No time on the clock. Arizona 32, Buffalo 30. Hence, the Bills now fall to 7-3. And and what that does in the AFC West, you now have three teams in the AFC West all with three losses. The Seahawks, who were undefeated a few weeks ago, they lost three in a row. The Rams are 6-3, and three, and the Arizona Cardinals are 6-3. and three. And maybe, if everyone were healthy, the best team in that division is sitting there at 4-5. and five. They're not healthy, but that would be the San Francisco 49ers. What a division. Now, I'm not telling you the rest of the NFL. 